Okay, so far we've seen how to take the derivatives of some basic functions like x to the n, sine, cosine, exponentials, and we've seen how to take products. So now we're going to look at quotients. And the basic question is, if we've got two functions that we understand, and we want to take the derivative of the ratio, what's the derivative of the ratio? And do not say f prime over g prime. That's dead wrong. Okay. No f primes over g primes. Okay. And the fact is, if we know the, the, the product rule, we can figure out the quotient rule. Here's how we go. Let's, give a, let's call f over g, give it a name. We'll call it h of x. Well, that means that f of x is g of x times h of x. And now we can apply the product rule to this. This says that f prime must be g prime times h plus g times h prime. So f prime minus g prime times h must be g times h prime. And then we just divide by g, and we get the formula for h prime. So h prime is f prime minus g prime times h divided by g. And of course, h is f over g. And so there we have it. Except this is a little bit ugly, because it's got this f over g in the numerator and a g downstairs. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by g. And then we get f prime times g minus f times g prime divided by g squared. Okay. So that is our quotient rule. The derivative of f over g is the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. And unlike the product rule, the order matters. The f prime term is positive. The g prime term is negative. OK, so let's do some examples. So let's figure out the derivative of the tangent function. We know the derivative of sine and cosine, but what's the derivative of tangent? So since that's sine over cosine, the derivative must be cosine times the derivative of sine minus sine times the derivative of cosine divided by cosine squared. And that gives us, well, the derivative of sine is cosine, so we get cosine squared, minus sine of x times the derivative of cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. And these negative, negative, the two negatives cancel. So we want a cosine squared plus sine squared. But cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So we want it with 1 over cosine squared, and that's secant squared. So we've just figured out that the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. Similarly, you can use the, the quotient rule to figure out the derivative of cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Okay. Now, you're not limited to just using one rule for each kind of problem. If you want to figure out the derivative of e to the x sine x over x squared plus 1, you can and you should use the quotient rule. So it's the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator divided by the denominator squared. And the derivative of x squared plus 1, that's easy. That's 2x. But what's the derivative of e to the x sine x? Oh, yeah, we've got a product rule for that. So we use the quotient rule at this step. And then at the next step, we use the product rule to say that the derivative of e to the x sine x is e to the x times the derivative of sine plus the derivative of e to the x times sine. And then we said, oh, the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. And then we write out what the derivative of e to the x and the derivative of sine are. And there we have it. OK? And if you can do some, if you want, you can do some algebra to arrange terms neatly. That's not, not strictly necessary. OK? And the last thing is let's. I promised when we did Newton's hammer, the, the power law, that we would visit negative powers. Now we're able to do it. So we're going to see what is the derivative of x to the n when n is a negative power. So let's suppose that n is negative m, where m is a positive number. Well, if you want to take the derivative of x to the n, x to the n is 1 over x to the m, and we use the quotient rule. So we get x to the m times the derivative of 1 minus 1 times the derivative of x to the m, 
all divided by x to the m squared. Now the derivative of one is zero, right? Constants don't change, the, the derivative is zero. So this term disappears. And the derivative of x to the m, since m is a positive number, we've got our power law for positive integers, and that gives us mx to the m minus one. So we put it all together and we get negative m, that's our negative m, x to the m minus one divided by two m. So that's minus m minus one. But n was negative m, so this is nx to the n minus one. So the power law works not just for positive integers, now we know that it works for negative integers. When we learn about the chain rule, we'll see why it works for fractions.